sad with sinners, the lonely and the lame. Some didn't understand, but he was not ashamed. Isn't that why he came? A poor lost world to save, to carry on a shame and heal the hurt away. Bring hope to the homeless, shield them from the blame. Oh, isn't that why He came? To rest in Sabbath. Thanks for coming today. Um, congratulations to all the mothers and those that have uh, birthdays. Um, it's, it's really good to see flowers for the mothers and all the work that everybody does as being a mother. Um, you know, I had a couple things to say before I started this sermon today. Um, you know, I've been at WMC or where we've been here for six months, my wife may be longer than that. But I see a lot of work that goes into production of, 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 a, uh, of a Sabbath day. And, I, and, and, I, and I, I just wanted everybody that partakes in either a pastor or um, somebody that does uh, uh, the music or singers or even the treasury, the board, just to, anybody that participates in in, in part in developing a, a Sabbath day, just to stand up, including AY, anything that anything that have to do with a, a Sabbath day, everybody, just stand up, everybody, everybody. Look at that. That's almost everybody. Now, isn't that amazing that you can go to a church where everybody, almost everybody, participates in a weekly basis? That's why that this church is successful. And that's why this church is growing. 
And I also had another thought this week, you know, why, why, did, why does God have me speak at, at this um, sermons? You know, I've done them all over the world, really. as Philippines, many in the Philippines, many in Ormoc, El Buera, here, Phil Am. I mean, I mean I, I, you know, I thought about that because, you know what, I'm really nothing better than anybody else. I mean, I'm probably worse, actually. I, I, I sin. Um, I'm not perfect, obviously. But, you know, I thought about it. I'm like, why, why does God have me speak? And, and I think he gave me the answer is that when I do these sermons, you know, I put a lot of effort into it. And, it, you know, I don't write it. It's not given to me in a day. I mean, it's like months. You know, and I think, I think the Lord just teaches me um, along the way about what I'm supposed to speak to. And then in, in the process of that, I learn myself, you know, because I'm trying to be a better uh, a Christian, a better servant of the Lord, a better husband, a better father. You know, it's still many times I think of that. I still really have a long way to go. But, you know, it's a good thing that we have a loving, gracious God that just never gives up on us. You know, amen? Um, okay. So today, today I wanted to, I don't know why I keep going to that. Today I wanted to talk about the... Uh, the ten, the ten Commandments, you know, and and it's important today to understand. I mean, we all know the Ten Commandments, but there's still a deeper understanding, I think, of you know what they are and what they are today. So we we all know the basic story. You know, uh, Moses went up to Mount Sinai for forty days, and God gave him at the at the, the Ten Commandments, and after that, he went down and, you know, things were in complete disarray. You know, they were worshiping calves and partying and doing all kind of crazy stuff. We all know that, that story. And, uh, you know, God was not happy about that, obviously. So what, what, are, what are the ten? You know, here's a list of the Ten Commandments. We, we, we all know, you know, what they say in, in the book of Exodus and and we all know what they say in the, in the New Testament. Although we say Ten Commandments, it was never really mentioned in the Bible that there were ten. God just happened to give ten. So we call them the Ten Commandments, but they're really the, it's called the Decalogue, which does actually mean ten. Um, in, the, in the New Testament, you know, Jesus talks about the Ten Commandments Many times, I mean, they have asked him, you know, Jesus, what is the most important commandment? And he says, love your God with all your heart and with all your soul. So that right there gives, gives the understanding that the, the Ten Commandments are as good today as they were 2,000 or 4,000, whatever, years ago. Now, you know, again, like in the Old Testament, where, where Moses got the Ten Commandments, and versus the New Testament, where they're mentioned, but not necessarily in a row, it's important to understand that in, today, when, in what's going on today, because people today don't believe that their Ten Commandments even exist. They believe that, the, it, because it's the Old Testament, that if you were born in, in the time of Moses, yeah, you had to follow that. Okay, but today, they, they think, I mean, I'm, there's people, many, 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 th billions think that Jesus came and fulfilled the Ten Commandments that we don't have to follow them today. And you know as well, it's true. No problem with this. Um, you know, Catholics, you know, I was Catholic for 25 years, you know, so th I understand that, 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 that sect. Um, they wrote their own Ten Commandments. You know, Muslims do not have any commandments at all. Um, Mormons, do, I, I, you know, I don't know if they follow them or not follow them. I know that they break them. Um, but in Matthew 5.17, it's important to understand that it says, and, and as, as the verse was today, it says, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets, I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. So did, did Jesus fulfill the commandments? Yes. 
but did he abolish them? The answer is no. And that's the one verse in the New Testament that, that if somebody says the Ten Commandments are not valid today, that's the one scripture that can prove that Jesus wants us, not just us as Seventh-day Adventists, everybody to follow the Ten Commandments. Do they apply today? And as Seventh-day Adventists, we all know that we're supposed to follow the Ten Commandments. As Catholics, they what seem to follow or think that, that they own Ten Commandments in different orders and things like that. But people in general don't think that they have to follow the Ten Commandments. And that really bewilders me because even if, let's just say for some weird thing that Jesus said, you don't have to follow the Ten Commandments, right? Wouldn't you really want to anyway? I mean, come on, you don't worship idols, you don't commit adultery, you don't lie. If you think about it, wouldn't you want to just follow it anyway? I mean, it's kind of like a moral obligation to, to you know, in any society that you, there's certain things you just don't want to do. You don't want to hurt somebody. You don't want to lie to them. You don't want to cheat them. You know, isn't, isn't it really that's like a moral thing without really saying it? Because it says it in the Bible. But, I mean, wouldn't you want to just follow it anyway? I mean, yes. Wouldn't you want to just follow it anyway? I would say yes. Now, as I, as I prepared this, I'm thinking, well, how does this relate to, you know, being a Seventh-day Adventist? And it's very simple. Belief 19, and, I, and, I, and I'll read it. It says, um, well, out of the 28 beliefs of being a Seventh-day Adventist, it says the great, the number 19 is the greatest principles of God's law are embodied in the Ten Commandments and exemplified in the life of Christ. They express love, will, and purpose concerning human conduct and relationships and are binding upon all people in every age. These precepts are the basis of God's covenant with his people and the standard in God's judgment. Through the agency of the Holy Spirit, they point out sin and awaken a sense of a need for a savior. Salvation is all of grace and not of works. And it is a fruit, is obedience of the commandments. The obedience develops Christian character and results in a sense of well-being. It is evidence of our love for the Lord and the concern for our fellow human beings. The obedience of faith demonstrates the power of Christ to transform lives and therefore strengthens Christians as witnesses. Amen? I mean, that's our belief. That's our belief. Now, commandment number one. Now, here's, 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 what I, here's really where the sermon, everybody knows the Ten Commandments, but well, here's what I want to explain, is that, you know, we have an enemy here, okay? We have Satan, the devil, whatever you want to call him, that deceives and twists and tries to make our lives miserable, so we turn to him and not turn to God. So don't think that just because the Ten Commandments are there that he's not going to try to do something that, that makes you not follow the Ten Commandments um, because he's deceiving you in some possible way. And, and, and I fell into that at, at times in my life. Like, you shall have no other gods before me. There, there's a list, of, just Googling, a list of gods that aren't God. I mean, you have Satan, you have Zeus, Athena, Odin, Durga, Vishnu. Those are all Hindu gods, okay? Besides people today, they want to be their own gods, like in the Mormon religion, if you did enough for people throughout your life, they believe that you can be your own God in some celestial planet 50,000 light years away. And if you don't believe me, you can read it. They believe that you can be your own God. Now, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't understand. It doesn't say that anywhere in the Bible. I'm sure. I know for a fact, actually. But just because you... You shall not have no other gods before me means we worship God. We worship Jesus Christ. He's our Savior. He's our Lord. And that's it, period. Amen? Amen. Now, Revelation 12, 9, you shall not worship idols. 
Revelation 12, 9 says, And the great dragon was thrown down, the serpent of old, who was called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. And he was thrown to earth, and his angels with him. Now, let me ask you a question. If, at the time of Moses, they were talking about idols, right? Well, they weren't talking about, back then it was different. What were they talking about? They were talking about they made golden calves, golden this, and they worshipped, right? And he, uh, uh, when Elijah was there, they called on other gods to light the fire, and God came and destroyed, made the biggest fire of all. There was no fire with anybody else. You shall not worship idols. But Satan comes in our, in our world with his angels or uh, evil spirits, whatever, and he gets in our minds or trans and, and does something to say, okay, well, there's no golden calves today, so we got to make something else. So these people worship idols, right? You're not going to go home and make a golden calf. I, I probably, right? You're not going to make a golden calf. But what, what are you going to do then? Because there are other idols in the world today. Maybe some people don't realize it, and that's why maybe I'm speaking here to you to make you understand that even though uh, a golden calf, you're not going to go home and make a golden calf, maybe there's another idol out there that, that you're given more time to than God. Here's today's idols, right? You don't see no golden calf on there. But what you do see is people have an identity crisis today that they think they want to be a god. You know, Madonna, uh, Bill Gates, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, maybe other people, maybe people you even know, you know? Maybe they got 25,000 followers on Facebook, <laughs> right? Oh, I got 25,000, you got 26,000. Well, I'm a god, you ain't. You know how many friends I got on Facebook? Zero. You know why? Because I deleted it. It is gone, it is gone forever, and I'll never have it again. Am I right or wrong? Are, I mean, am I right? Now, I mean, if this applies to you, it applies to you. If it doesn't, it doesn't. You know, maybe it'll open your eyes a little bit. But it's up to you. I'm not, I'm not here to judge. It's up to you. It's your conviction with the Holy Spirit, not me. I'm just showing it on paper. We worship, some people worship their identity. They think they're the greatest thing that ever existed. And raise your hand if you ever met one of them. People worship money. They're idol, money's their idol. You, you may not have a golden calf, but you may think you have a lot of money. How much money does it take to get into heaven? Not one penny. <laughs> right? Not one penny. It doesn't cost anything. It's free. The grace of God is free. Right? When Jesus came, he didn't come to serve the rich. He came to serve who? The poor. They needed him the most. Because the people with money... All they cared about is money. You know, in my life, I'll be honest with you, that's all I ever cared about. I used to make a lot of money. I used to make a half a million dollars a year. You know what it got me? Divorced. Uh, no relationship with the Lord. And when it was all over, a whole bunch of bills. And not $100 bills either. Now that I don't care about it, I mean, we don't live in a fancy house. We don't drive a fancy car. Can we afford it? Probably. But ever since I quit caring about money and more caring about the Lord, I have a lot of money. I don't even care about it. I give it. A lot of it I just give. We're doing very well in our business. The Lord has really blessed us. My wife is working so many hours a day to help our business grow that I don't even know how she does it. 
She's on the phone for, for eight, nine hours a day, taking care of kids, changing diapers. Mom's now got three jobs instead of just one. It, 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 I mean, it, it's, it, I'd never seen anything like it. I'm gone 12 hours a day fixing stuff. But you know, the Lord has blessed us. And I don't know why he's blessed me, but because I'm nothing great. You know, Paul used to say he's the least of the apostles. Maybe in our eyes, he's the greatest because he did the most. A third of the Bible was written by Paul. Or not a third, I mean a, 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 a percentage. All the epistles to other churches, he was written by him. Paul used to kill the Christians. Paul was a persecutor of Christians. And God chose him. Do you know why God chose the sinners? Because if he didn't choose sinners, there'd be nobody to choose. Entertainment. I turned off the tube. I hardly watch anything. YouTube maybe, some programs from the 60s. I don't know. I can't take it anymore. The Oscars, these people get up there and they want you to worship them. You know, the Super Bowl halftime show, I've never seen anything like it. Illuminati signals. <clears throat> Illuminati signals. You've got people up there that just want to be the greatest that there is. You know? More money, more fame. Look at Bill Gates. $50 billion. He's getting divorced. His wife's getting half. What are you going to do? Robert De Niro. Everybody knows Robert De Niro. He had to go to court uh, two weeks ago because his wife spent all his money. He don't have any money left, and he's got to go back to work. I don't know what he is, 80 years old or whatever. I don't know. He's got to continue to act. That's the entertainment business for you. It's a horrible, horrible thing. You're not going to get mad at me. I know. I'm going to say phones. I'm telling you, I've never seen anything like it. Including myself, to be honest with you, because you get addicted. I mean, you got the, all these apps in front of you. you. I mean, you can do anything you want with it now. You'll check the thermometer, check, check the weather, check the humidity, uh, check the news, get on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Parler, whatever, whatever you want. So many people are on Facebook, they spend hours and hours and hours a day on Facebook. And how, guess how much they spend time with God? Ten minutes with God, six hours with Facebook. Who's your idol? Are you breaking the commandment? Yeah. Am I breaking the commandment? Yeah. Do I realize it now that I am? Yes. And i got to stop. And that's why, I, that's why I got rid of Facebook, because I didn't get rid of it until I started writing the sermon. Now it's gone. I don't want it. I don't want any. I don't want it. I don't want to be traced, tracked, filmed, nothing. It's all gone. I've seen people working at work in their jobs, their job in one hand, working on a computer, and two Facebook accounts on the, looking at, I mean, how do you do that? I can't. They do it. Comfort. Comfort is an idol. I mean, I sure would like to have a million dollar house or the finest car that there is. It's a slippery slope, you know. I mean, if you can afford it, you know, what, whatever, you know. Doesn't mean you have to have it either. People worship, or an idol could be comfort. I mean, sometimes people live way beyond their means. You know, I, you know, I fix appliances. I'm all, we fix appliances we're in, in uh, uh, furnaces and all that. So we're all, we're all over Illinois and Wisconsin. I've been to these million-dollar houses. Walk in, I'm all dirty with my factory shirt on, whatever like that. And they got to pay me $100 deductible. And I'm done with the job. It's fixed, right? And they owe me the $100. Well, I want my $100, right? 
Well, they tell me, well, can you split it up between three credit cards? Three, not two, three. How is that? <laughs> that amazes me. She still owes me $35. She can't, I said, just forget about it. She couldn't come up with $35. I'm not making fun of her, but I mean, this is a sad truth we live in. She couldn't come up with $35. I've had people that with million dollar houses, they got their garage closed. I'm like, wow, that's odd. Why is their garage closed? Well, you look inside there, and there's a 1996 Toyota Corolla they're driving around. It's all rusted out, it barely runs, and then, well, you know, you got your million dollar house. What, do you, what else you got? No life. We can worship comfort, you know. I mean, I'm not saying that anybody here does or whatever. Maybe, maybe you do, maybe you don't. I don't know. I know people that do. I don't know anybody that here does. I don't know what your personal lives are like. And finally, sex. You know, this is a world that has gone crazy on sex. I'm telling you, it, is, it seems like the days of Noah all over again. This world is crazy. And, and, you know, it's all predicted in the book of Revelation. But the world's gone crazy on sex. I mean, it's everywhere. I could say everybody here, whatever, is Seventh-day Adventist. But in the world out there, I mean, it seems like it's just gone crazy. You know? It's unfortunate. And it's sad. But it's also been prophesied. You shall not use the mis, uh, misuse the name of the Lord, commandment number three. Now, when I first did this, I'm thinking, okay, well, that's obviously, you know, people that say, you know, the obvious word um, that, I'm, that I'm not going to repeat. But, I mean, it's the obvious, use the name of the Lord in vain. But when I got deeper into it, you know, it's, it's a little deeper than that. I mean, people that say that uh, God spoke to them, just to say God spoke to them, that's using the Lord's name in vain because he didn't speak to you. And finally, on this uh, uh, slide here, when we don't reflect the holiness of God every day, 24 hours a day, you're really misusing the name of the Lord. The Lord wants us to be a holy people. And you know, I'm guilty of it. I'm sure everybody's here guilty of it. Maybe you aren't. I don't know. When we don't reflect the holiness of God, then we're really misusing the name of the Lord in vain. Now, many years ago, I was, in a, in a, in a, in a, I was involved in a church, and it was a cult. I found out later, and my cousin came me and got me out of it. This was before I even knew my wife. And it was, a, it was a ministry of deliverance um, that uh, had about 40 people at, and they would, would deliver evil spirits out of you. Well, you know, we all believe in that. I mean, it says in the um, Bible that there's evil spirits. But, I mean, they would throw blankets over you, and they would chant, and they would do all kind of crazy things. And she was the mediator between um, God and us, not Jesus Christ, she would go to God and then tell us what he said. Now, I'm glad I'm out of it, obviously, but I was in it for a couple years, and it took me a few years to actually get over it once I realized um, it was all phony, you know? But there's many cults out there today misusing the name of the Lord. I mean, look at Jim Jones. I mean, look at Joel Olstein. Look at uh, Joyce Meyer, I mean, false prophecies galore, saying that God spoke to her, or Joel says, Joel says, God spoke to him, and everybody here is going to be, uh, have more money tomorrow. That's a prosperity ministry. And think about it. God came to serve the poor, so he put somebody in charge of giving people wealth. You know, I, I, I have a problem with that. I think God would, too. Here's the big one, guys. Honor the Sabbath. Now, every other religion out there today, or, or uh, church, whatever, will, will tell you, 
that you don't have to honor the Sabbath. Every single one, even non-denominational evangelicals, worship on Sunday. Now, isn't that sad how they've diluted the Word of God and how Satan has deceived people into worshiping on Sunday? Because the Bible says to, to worship on Saturday, on the, on the Sabbath, which is the seventh day of the week. It wasn't changed until after the New Testament was written, around 100 to 200 A.D., that the, 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 Roman, the Roman pagans or, or Roman Catholics, to be specific, they were persecuting the, the Christians and they wanted to bring it all together to, get, to let them worship, but worship under their terms, which would have been on Sunday. And they said, well, we'll stop persecuting if you worship on Sunday. I don't know about you, but my Sabbath day is on Saturday. It's going to be on Saturday, today, tomorrow, and until the day I die. Because the Bible says, the fourth, com or the, yeah, the fourth commandment says, you shall honor the Sabbath. And we as Seventh-day Adventists take that to heart. So we, we, we honor the Sabbath. And we really honor it here at this church. I mean, we come here to, for prayer in the morning, a, a sermon, a potluck, an AY program. I mean, we, we, we really do honor the Sabbath. And we need to bring more people in, into, into this church because they need to honor all the Ten Commandments themselves and honor the Lord, for that matter. Honor your mother and father. You know, I didn't. I was mean to my mom. I was young. We didn't get along. I regret it now. She's dead, but um, I, re I really do. I mean, I really regret it. But parents in America today, not necessarily at Seventh-day Adventists, but parents in general, have no control over their, over their children. The children tell them what to do. Right? I, I mean, seriously. And even, even so, I mean, it seems like not necessarily, nothing it really applies to in here, um, but even today, even today, men act more like women and women act more like men. And I don't understand that, but I mean, if you go out in the world, which we have to sometimes go out in the world, um, it's odd to me, um, but it's, it really is the truth. Satan wants to break up the family. I mean, that's a fact. The divorce rate in America is 50%, 75% if you're older. Imagine that one out of two marriages fail. If it's after five years, it's up to five years, I think it's 75% fail. And then after five years, it, it it's, uh, levels out at about 50%. But 50% of, of, of marriages fail in America. I, I wrote this because it, it says parents want, a demo, parents want a democratic household. They want to vote on things. They want to say, okay, well, let's negotiate on taking the garbage out. No. You take the garbage out because I said you're taking the garbage out. Even today, you know, kids will be kids. I mean, no, nobody's perfect, obviously. But we were getting in the van to come here today. And I told Charlie, I said, you know, your bike was tipped over in the yard. And I said, I looked at him, I said, go, uh, Pick up, before you get in the van, pick up your bike. It fell on the ground. And uh, I'm coming out of the house, and I got in the van, and I'm thinking, that bike was still tipped over. Huh. I said, Charlie? I said, what did I say? I said, go pick up your bike so it doesn't get ruined. Okay? Well, he got out. He didn't argue with me. Didn't say a word. He got out of the van. And he went to, to, go, to go pick up his bike. Well, it was wet, so um, my wife said, don't, we'll get it later. But, I mean, the point is that he went, he, I didn't have to 
argue with him. He went and did it. Okay? But here in, 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 in the church here, in the Seventh-day Adventist church, is almost a different world than it is out there. Um, but we need to be aware of it because what's going out there is the reason that these kids are growing up in gangs and murderers and uh, smoking weed all the time and robbing and stealing. You know, it all starts with, with the family. You know, it's, it, it's nice that it, it, being a Seventh-day Adventist, we believe in having a strong family fellowship structure. You know, everybody should be a, a Seventh-day Adventist. I mean, if everybody was a Seventh-day Adventist, I bet you 95% of the pro problems in the world wouldn't even exist. Let alone if everybody followed the Ten Commandments. No, there'd be no problems, right? Because nobody would kill anybody. Okay. Speaking of which, look, <laughs> thou shalt not murder. You know, besides third world countries, the, the biggest increase in murder has gone crazy from 2020 to 2021. There is so much murder in, in this country right now. In Ro we live in Rockford. There's a lot of murder in, in, in Rockford. There's a ton of it in Chicago. Murder after murder after. It's all you hear about. People killing each other, shooting each other. They don't care about the Ten Commandments. They just care about drugs or money or uh, crossing the gang line, whatever it is. It's not the way God wanted us to live. That's why Jesus, I can't wait for the day Jesus comes back. I, I can't. I cannot wait. I, I wish he'd come today. Maybe he will. We don't know. But there are people out there that predict when he's going to come, and every one of them has been wrong because he ain't here yet. There's more murder and crime in the United States and all over the world, people killing each other, wars, famine, pestilence. All of it's predicted in the, in the, in the, in the book of Revelation. It should be no surprise. It's unfortunate that we're living in it. You know, it gets worse every year. It doesn't get better. We're in it, so. But, you know, I find, I, I find a sanctuary for myself in, in, this, in this place. I feel a sense of peace once a week, you know? You know, even though I'm not talking or running around or, you know, talking with everybody, you know, it's because I just feel a sense of peace, and it's nice that I don't have to argue with customers or try to collect money or boss the kids around or like this, like that, because I know they're watched. You know, I know everybody's watching the children and this and that, so it gives, it gives, it gives us a time of peace and relaxation. You know, that's why the Sabbath, uh, going back to the, to the fourth, that's why the Sabbath is so important, you know? It's just so important for me to come here and, and everybody here to, to fellowship and, and enjoy each other, even if we don't even know each other. You know? You know, when it's today, you know, you know, I did this at the Phil Am Church, you know, a couple of years ago. I said, you know, everybody here doesn't know everybody here, I don't think. So, you know, you should, today is a birthday party, but maybe today or next week or whatever, you know, pick, pick a table that you never sat at before and start talking to that person. You know? We tend to, well, the one thing I do notice is that we tend to hang around cliques. You know, I, you always sit, not you, but I mean, well, yeah, you. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> we always sit with our same group of people, but we're a family. So we, let's switch it around. Let's get to know other people in here. Amen. You shall not commit adultery. You know, the Bible says, even if you look at a woman with lust, it's committing adultery. That's what the Bible says. But, so, so I mean, I'm, I'm sure I'm guilty of it at some point in my life. It just, so, it just so happens that I don't have to anymore because I got the most beautiful wife there is. Amen. Sorry, guys. No, all you guys are beautiful, huh? But you know, adultery in America, or probably around the world, 
you know, is at an all-time high. You know, this chart, I found it on the internet under family studies. Look, look, at, look at this. 24% of married people over 80 cheat on their spouse. Can you imagine that? Getting up out of your wheelchair to go find another side hustle? <laughs> that amazes me. You're married for 60 years and you gotta find somebody else? But that's the trend, and, uh, uh, but, but though, the women is the pink line. The women over 80 is only 6%. It's the men that over 80 are the, seem to be the problem on this chart. So when you all get to 80, read your Bibles. <laughs> women, you're on track. There is a disparity, though. But I think, I think all along, women have had a, uh, are, are more loyal, it seems, than men statistically, worldwide or nationwide, whatever be the case. But that's in America. Now, if you go to Iran or you go to Syria or Yemen, I have friends from all over there. I mean, I watch a documentary on, on, in, in Iran. If you commit adultery on, on, on your husband, I mean, you're dead. Matter of fact, in the Philippines, since you guys are all Filipino, the law still stands there if you cheat, husband or wife, you can actually go to jail. Um, uh, actually, it's a crime. I, I, I believe that's still a crime. And you can't get divorced. I think you have to wait like 10 years to get an annulment. By then, you're going to be in the 80 category. So you might as well just stay married. <laughs> right? Right? Adultery is a big problem in, in, this, in this world today. I don't think it's so much of a big problem in here. But you know, when we deal with people in, in the outside world, and we have an enemy that seeks to, de that seeks to destroy us and just murder our souls, because he doesn't want us believing in Jesus Christ. He wants us believing in him. I don't want him. I don't want, I don't want the devil. I already tried that life. I don't want it. You shall not steal. You know, whether you believe it or not, everybody stole something in their life. You know, when I was a kid, I remember, we grew up Catholic. We weren't, you know, we weren't supposed to steal. But I had a bike, and um, we used to ride down to the golf course, me and my friends. And uh, the, the guy used to have these uh, coconut cream pies. You know, remember those coconut cream pies? Man, I love those things, but I never had any money when I was like 11 years old. So one of my friends would distract the guy, and I'd grab a couple of these coconut cream pies, and we'd be on our way, and, you know, we'd be happy for a couple of minutes, you know? Until one day, one day, the guy caught me, and he grabbed me by the arm, and he looked at me, and I mean, he was back, you know, back then it was different, not today, I mean, you, know, you get DCFS called on you if you, if you uh, smack your kid on the butt. You know, you go to jail these days. But back then it was different. That guy grabbed me by the arm, twisted around and said, if you ever come and steal anything from me or anybody else again, I swear I will get you bad. Ugh. Think I ever went in there again? One day I went in with 50 cents and bought a real cream pie. Said, here's your money back. You know, every, I put this on your fireproof story. I've watched fireproof so many, so many times over when, since when it came out. Anybody, everybody seen fireproof? You know? Well, he wasn't very nice to his wife, and his wife wasn't really nice to him, whatever. But he was worse, and I really couldn't blame her, you know, when you watch the beginning of it. You know, he did all kind of stuff to her, you know, he yelled and screamed and, and all kind of stuff, you know? And then, and then uh, you know, he started, his dad talked, the, the, his dad talked the, the kid into doing the 40-day the love dare on, on the wife, right? And, uh, you know, it wasn't going so great because she was filing for divorce. And she had this other guy, that doctor that was 
taking a liking to her, you know? And, and it was like, you know, day eight or nine or ten or whatever be the case, and he goes to the dad and says, you know, I just don't, I just don't go for this Jesus stuff. You know, I, I just don't really go for it, you know? He goes, he goes I, I, you know, I'm good enough. The way I am, I can get into heaven. I said, his dad says, yeah, let me ask you a couple questions. Did you ever cheat? Did you ever steal something? Yeah? Did you ever look at somebody with lust or look at pornography, whatever? He said, yeah. Yeah, I did. Did you ever do this? Did you ever do this? Did you ever do that? And he says, yeah. So the dad says, by your own admission, you're telling me that you're a lying, cheating, stealing thief. And you say you're going to get into heaven? And his eyes, uh, who, uh, his eyes lightened up like, wow. You know, I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't look at it that way. A lot of people don't look at it that way. Thou shalt not lie. I mean, everybody's lied. Everybody lies, continues to lie. You know, they say, here's, a, here's some common, here, here, here's some white lies. The people with the problem with white lies is they turn into gray and then they turn into black, right? So if you start lying, you're a liar. So what do you do if somebody says, Pastor Sam comes up to me and says, you know, I've been working out, you know, running, doing all this kind of stuff like this. How do I look? Well, what if in your mind you don't look too good? What do you do? I don't know. A lot of people would say, well, you know, yeah, you look great. You know? You know, my wife came home one day, and uh, I lied. I had to lie. You have to lie to your wife. I, 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 I hate to admit this, but if your wife asks you how, if, you, if she looks good, what are you going to say? <laughs> I mean, really, what are you going to say? But she comes home, going, I thought she was going to get her hair done. She wasn't getting her hair done. She was meeting a friend of hers because she couldn't get the appointment. And she comes home with this uh, red wig on. It's down here, and it's hanging all over the place. And I'm like, how, 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 do, you, how do you like it, honey? I did this for you. Um, well, uh, you know, uh, um, what are we having for dinner? Um, I'm hungry. Uh, you know, how are the kids today? You know? You know, what do you do? You know? I don't know. That's up to you guys. White lies turn to gray, the gray to black. You know? Let's just deal with that. Yeah, I agree with you. They say, say I agree with you. Yeah, what if you don't agree? You're lying. A lie's a lie. You say, uh, uh, should I wear the, uh, should I do something today? Yeah, 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 yeah. I agree with you. No, you don't. You don't agree with you. You're lying. So that makes you a liar. I'm a liar. Not so much anymore, because I don't have anything to lie about. But I mean, we all tell our white lies, but we need to be cognizant of it, because it is in the Ten Commandments, you know. It says very clearly, thou shall not lie. And God uh, is, is watching us. And so is the, 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 the enemy. The, the enemy's watching us as, as well. So if he can make us lie once, he knows he can get us to lie second, third, fourth, fifth times. Pretty soon we're all liars. I have a friend, I don't know if he's a really friend of mine. This guy is a pathological liar. I started, a couple years ago, I started keeping track of all his lies. I mean, I ran out of paper. I ran out of paper. I quit keeping track, just a liar. How about this one, your secret's safe with me. Yeah, yeah, right. I'm not talking about Seventh-day Adventists. I'm talking about Filipinos, and trust me. Forget the Seventh-day Adventism. I know a lot of Filipino gossipers. Trust me. And if somebody said to you, don't tell anybody. Okay, I won't. You're liars. What if your wife makes something? And it looks not so good. 
tastes even worse, and she says, well, how do you like it? It's, it's delicious. <laughs> no, it's not. It's horrible. But what do you say? I don't know. <laughs> if you say it's delicious, then she's going to make it again, and then you're really stuck. <laughs> Better just to tell her the truth. You know, it's not my favorite dish. I, you know, next time can you try something different? My wife makes, we had a big argument uh, when we lived on the other side, of, a big, a big argument. And, and, you know, if you say, well, you're a Seventh-day Adventist and you argue, well, if, you, if you're married, at some point you're going to have an argument. I don't, I don't care what you say. I don't believe it if you don't. Maybe, maybe that's true. But she made some stuff in the house, and it was this uh, uh, dried fish stuff. <laughs> she put it on the stove and cooked this and cooked that, and I came home from work, and I, you know, I'm like, what, what, what happened? There's a sewer back up. What did you do? There's something wrong here. The house is, I got to call exterminator or something. That's it. I put it down. No more dried fish in my house. I don't care. I can't take it. I can't take it. I don't like it. I can't stand the smell of it. I don't know how you can. I don't know. The kids love it. You're, we're not supposed to lie. That's the point. You know? How do you handle your own little white lie situation? That's up to you and your spouse or you and your boss. Really, I recommend just telling the truth in an in a, in a, in a enlightened way with, with love. You know, honey, do you, how was my cooking? Well, honey, you know, I, you know, honestly, I really didn't care for it. I mean, you know, I appreciate your effort in, in doing it, but I, you know, I don't, I, I, I just, it's not my favorite dish. You know? A little different one, she says, wow, I made myself up today. How do, you, how, how do I look today? And you're thinking to yourself, I'm just staying home. I'm not going out with her. <laughs> All right, last, uh, what, we got one more slide? Yeah, okay. You know what, when I thought about this one, you shall not covet your neighbor's goods. Now, you have to understand what covet means. Covet means that you want something that somebody else has. Right? Now, have you done it? I have. I'd stand up here and, I, and I'm giving a sermon. I'll say, yeah, I admitted it. Not so much anymore because, like I said earlier, I don't so much care about money anymore. I matter. I don't care about it, and the more I don't care about it, the more God gives me. So, um, but people do covet, especially today. Maybe some of you do. If you do, then this is an important slide for you, because in order to covet, you have to want something that somebody else already has. Okay. Now, if you realize that and how you get there, then this is almost a really important commandment because how are you going to get that? You might have to break every other commandment that there is just to get what so you want from somebody else. What if you covet your neighbor's wife? That's not, that's not only coveting, that's adultery, right? And what if she wants a lot of money? Then you got to steal the money, find the money, whatever. And then you're, break, then you're all in a cycle of breaking the ten, ten Commandments. You got to want something that somebody else has, and then most likely you're going to sin to get it. Then you're going to break the other nine, and then you're going to fall back to number one. It's a vicious cycle that the enemy set up. God didn't set this up. The devil did. He said, you could have a house just like your neighbor. Now, it's not necessarily a house like your neighbor's or a car like your neighbor's. It's, I, I want your, my neighbor's house. And there's a difference between, I'd, I'd like to have a nice car. 
or I want that specific car. There's nothing wrong with wanting things. The problem is, what are you going to do to get what you want? Okay. So what is this all about? It's about knowing the Ten Commandments and know where you individually feel about them in, in your conviction of the Holy Spirit. You know, if, you, if you're doing any of this stuff, like breaking these, you know, some of these commandments, whatever, then just be cognizant of it. We, you know, we have a forgiving, graceful God that loves us no matter what. You know? And if you're spending too much time on your phone, then, then give yourself a time that you'll do it from 9 in the morning till 11 or, you know, disconnect it, whatever be the case. Or pay attention to what some of these other things are. I know it's made me a lot more aware of things that I'm doing wrong, so I'm hoping and praying that this has given somebody, even just one person, a little bit of enlightenment on their relationship with Jesus Christ. And I pray that you enjoyed hearing this, and I, and I hope even if I just helped one person today. Maybe more, I don't know. That's up to you and, and your relationship with Jesus Christ. But I also pray that we, all of us, can have a better relationship with Jesus Christ. I'm going to leave off with this. Think about this. What if everyone in the world followed the Ten Commandments? Wouldn't that be fun? Huh? Wouldn't it be wonderful? What would the world be like today? We all know what the, what the answer to that is. We know that it would be a much more better place. And you know what it's going to be like when Jesus returns? It's going to be like that. Because there's going to be no lying. There's going to be no stealing. There's going to be no coveting. There's going to be no arguing, gossiping. All of it's going to be gone because we freely chose under our own free will to worship the Lord our God. Amen.